Hi and welcome back to the second part of the Multivander e-commerce website using Django. In this part we're going to make it possible to add products to the cart, or to make it possible to view the cart, update the quantity in the cart and similar. We're also going to implement Stripe as a payment gateway and some other small stuff. So let's begin with the first task which is make it possible to add products to the cart. To do this we need one more app. We want to call this cart. So we can begin by creating the folder mkdir apps cart and then we start the Django app Python managed by start app cart and apps slash cart. We're not going to have any models here so you can just run the server again but we still need to add it to the list of installed apps. apps.cart great and then I want to set some other settings here in the settings.py file I want one variable here called session cookie h equals 86400 which is one day in seconds and this is how long products will be laying in the cart before it gets refreshed by the browser and then I want one cart session id equals cart this is just the name of the session we can choose any other words if you want to but this makes sense and then I want to create one file inside the cart app called cart.py cart.py this will be a class to keep track of all the products and similar that the user has in the cart so first we need to import settings so we can use those two variables we just created from django.conf import settings and I want to import the product model as well. So from apps.products.models apps import product. I have already created the code for this cart object, but I will go through it line by line and explain to you what happens. So first we create a new class called cart and pass in object. And then we use the initialize function just to set a few variables. First, we get the session from the request. And then we create or check if there are a cart or session with the session ID in it. And if not, we create a new session with this ID and just set it as an empty dictionary. And then we set self.cart equals cart. So it's either a cart or we create one cart. And then we have an iterate function because we need to do some changes to the items every time we use them. So the first thing that happens here is that we loop through all of the keys in the cart and then in here we set a new property for the key which is product and we get the product from the database by using the key itself which is the ID for the product. And when that's done, we loop through all of the items, which is the values in the cart. And we combine the product price with the item quantity, so we get the total price per item. This will probably be a little bit overwhelming right now, but you will probably understand much more when we, try to, when we start to implement this class. Then we have a length function for the class, which gives us the number of quantities in total or how many objects we have in the cart. Below here we have the first custom function which is the add function. Here we get the product ID, the quantity and if it's an update or add. We need to convert the product ID to a string because we are using this as a key in the cart. And here we first check if product ID not in the cart then we create one of one object of this product ID, set the quantity to 1 and give the ID to the product ID. But if we are updating the quantity, we just increment the quantity for this product ID with the quantity we get passed in. And if the quantity is 0, that means that we are going down when we click minus in the cart, we just remove the product from the cart if it's 0. And then we call a save function. Here we have a remove function that checks if the product ID is in the cart. Then we can delete it from the cart 
and call the save function. Here is the save function itself. And what this does is to change or set session to this cart. So all information we have in the cart gets stored in the session. And then we call self.session modified to tell the browser that it has changed. Declare is almost the same as remove, it's just that with this we can clear the whole cart with just one click. And then we have a get total cost which will give us the price for the whole cart. So here we just loop through the keys and set the product similar and then we use a sum function to get the quantity multiplied with the price per item in the values. And that's the class. And I'm sorry if it was a little bit too much information at once, but we will implement the functions here step by step. So then we can create one forms to which is the add to cart form. So inside the product, we create a new file called forms.py. And here we need to import forms from Django from Django import forms class add to cart forms dot form and here we just want one field quantity equals forms dot integer field and that's the whole form we just use this for validation and then we can use this form in the views for the product detail view so we can first import the form from dot forms import add to cart form should be the whole name sorry add to cart form so we know that since this ends with form we know it's a form like that and i want to import one more function from django from django dot contrib import messages so we can show message to the user when we added a product to the cart and then we also need to import the cart class we created from apps.cart.cart import cart and then inside the product view we need to do some changes first you need to create the instance of the cart so we say cart equals cart and then we just pass in the request parameter and then we can check if the product now if the form has been submitted we can do that below this line so here is the if request dot method equals post then we say form equals add to form cart and pass in the request dot post data now we can check if the form is valid and if it is, we can say quantity equals form dot cleaned data quantity. So now we have the form, now the quantity from the form. And we can't just save this because it's not a model form like the user creation form. But we can call the cart.add function. Cart.add product add ID equals product.id which we get from this object quantity equals quantity if the user has typed 5 for example and up, update quantity can be set to false and when that's done we can create a new message to show the user messages.success request the product was added to the cart and we can return the user back to the product return redirect back to the name product which is name of the view category slug is category slug and product slug equals product slug you want to see that I have imported the redirect no, that's need to be imported here as a shortcut from Django. And if the form hasn't been submitted, we still need to create an instance of the form. So I can just copy this, but here we don't pass in anything. 
then we just need to make this available in the front end like that so now we can use this in, for, in the template so if I now just go to product.html and here below the description I add the hr just to separate the description on this a little bit then I first check if there are any messages if messages messages is always globally available in the, all of the templates so we don't have to import this or do anything more so every time we do this this is added to the session and the next time we call this it will show so for message in messages div class notification is success so it's nice and green and it's toast which will make it pop from the right corner in a little while message then we can say and for and and if and then we need to render the form for showing the add to cart button form method is post action whoops just be dot so it's the same page we are on since this is a form in a post request we need to add a csrf token and div class field has add-ons so the button and the input field can be into each other div class control input type number so we get the plus and minus button name quantity value is default set to one plus input and minimum can be set to one and then we need the button div class control button class button is dark and is uppercase add to cart so we can just see how this looks I go into a product yes now we have it here perfect then I just need to add some CSS to make the message pop from the right corner so if I just find the main.css file there I have already created this so I add a comment notification toast and then I add a keyframe animation and for every notification that is toast, we set the position to fixed, bottom 100%, so it's below the screen, and 20 pixels from the right. And when this is added, we call this animation name, and the duration is 4 seconds. So you can see it in action soon. If you don't want to write all of this, you will find it in the GitHub, which I will add in the description below. So if I now refresh, try to add the cart, the product was added to the cart, perfect. So everything there seems to be working now. So then I can go back to the to-do list and set the first task to done. Next step now is to create a view and template for the cart. And the first thing I want to do then is to create something called a context processor for the cart, just like we did for the categories, I want one for the cart as well. So if I now just find the cart app, create a new file, context, processors.py and in here I just import the cart model from dot cart import cart and def cart request return cart cart request so instead of uh, in every view we do this and pass it into the template we can just make it available for all of the templates by doing this and then registering with Django so if I now go into settings.py I can edit here apps.cart.contextprocessors.cart so now the cart will be available in all of the templates so we don't have to think about it anymore then we can create a new view for the cart so in the views.py in the cart app here we say def cart detail 
request return render request and then the template name which is cart slash cart.html and save and then we can create a new template for the cart so new folder templates and in there a new folder cart and inside there the cart.html there will be a lot of writing here so I prepared the code and pasted it but I will go through it so first we extend the base template and then we set the title to cart so it will show up in the browser and then inside the content we add a title named cart and then the first thing we do is to check if cart which will tell us if we have any objects in the cart or not then we add a box element with a margin bottom 6 and inside there we have a table and the table is set to full width and is striped so every second product in the cart will be dark background here we have a simple head for the product, the quantity, price and the thumbnail and then the action at the last and then we loop through all of the items in the cart here we add the image we use the get thumbnail, in get thumbnail function from the previous part and then we have a link to the product where we show the title as well and then below there we have a simple print for the quantity and we have added two links here this just links to the same page we are on with change quantity where we pass in the item ID and quantity is minus one and then a minus and same here we increment it with one and just show a plus symbol and then here we have the item total price the total price is the one we calculate here when we iterate through the object now the cart itself and then we have a simple remove from cart where we just pass in the ID and at the foot of the table we show the total cost how many quantities we have there and also get total cost which is the function we created at the bottom here and then we close that box and we create a new subtitle with contact information here we have a simple form which is set to post and we also add the CSRF token I've split it into two columns so we have one column for the first name the last name, the email and the phone and then the address is in the next column with zip code and place so we just have some very simple input fields for all of this so the only one that different is the email because we want to validate that it's actually an email address we get from the user and then below that one we get the payment information and then we have a simple field where we add the checkout button I will do some more stripe here afterwards and if there aren't any products we just get you don't have any products in your cart and save so you'll soon see this in action first I just need to create one more urls.py file urls.py and from django.urls import path and from dot import views url patterns path this can be empty because in the other urls we'll prepare this with cart so views dot cart detail name equals cart and save and then we can go to the main URLs and import this so we can add it below the vendors path cart slash include apps.cart.urls so every URL that starts with cart will be using the other URLs pi we just created this one so everything still seems to be okay here so now we can create a link in the base.html template to link to this page base.html and below this contact we can create this 
first is a div class navbar item and in here we say a href and the url will go to cart class button is dark cart and you can see here if cart then you show cart pipe it into length with which is a filter from Django that tells us the length of this object and if so if we have anything in the cart we will show the number here inside two parentheses so if I now refresh we see cart and one in parentheses which means that we have one item in the cart and if I go in there now you will see the cart title and then the box that had the table with the products with the thumbnail, the product name, the item quantity plus and minus and the simple remove button below we have the two columns with the input fields and then the title payment information with the checkout button which we will come back to later in this part now I can go back here and set the task to done the next step now is to make it possible to remove products from the cart and as you might remember inside the template cart.html we already added a link to this this one remove from cart to repost in the item id so when i click this i want to remove this object or item from the cart and that's actually very easy if i just go back to views.py in here I say remove from cart equals request dot get dot get remove from cart default it to empty and then we can check if remove from cart then cart dot remove remove from cart which will be the ID of the object we want to remove and return redirect cart this is very important if not you'll just be stuck in a stupid loop so here we call the remove function which you created in here then it's remove and then we save the object and then we're ready to test the remove function so if i now go back to the cart just refresh so everything's okay then i can click the remove okay cart is not defined sorry so in cart views.py there is an error cart views.py cart is not defined of course not because I need to create an instance of the cart but in cart equals cart request and then save so if I now just refresh cart is then of course I need to import the cart object from dot cart import cart and save now hopefully refresh redirect is not okay sorry about that paste and now hopefully it should be okay refresh and now you don't have any products in your cart perfect so if i go back to sofa just edit again so everything is okay now it's back there perfect so then I can go to the to-do list and set this task to done. Next step now is to make it possible to update the quantity. So this will be very similar to the remove function. So if I just go back into views.py in the cart app, then where I, where I get this, I can also say change quantity equals request dot get dot get change quantity this can also default to empty and then i also need to get the quantity from the parameters so quantity equals request get get quantity and also this can default to zero and then below the remove from cart i can say if change quantity then you say cart dot add change quantity this is a product id and then here is a quantity 
and true because this is an update call and we also need to redirect the user back to the cart so here we actually just call the same add function and then we pass in the product ID, the quantity and the update is set to true so if I now refresh and click plus this says 2 and also the price incremented and the total price incremented if I say that this go down and if I go down one more time it's also removed from the cart perfect and that's happening because it, when it go down to zero it removes the cart or no the item from the cart so then I can set that mask task to done and now we need to create a new app and models for the orders because you need to store this someplace so if I just stop the server now and create a new folder mk there apps order and then we start the Django app python manage with py start app order apps slash order and here we're going to need some models but I need to add it to the list of installed apps first apps.order save and close that file and if I now just find the order app here I can go into the models.py where we're going to create the models so here I need to import both the product and the vendor model so from apps.product.models import product and from apps.vendor.models import vendor and then I want one model for the order so class order models.model and I want a field to keep track, keep track of the first name of the one who is doing the order models.char field max length can be set to 100 and I can copy this and replace with last name and I can do the same for email and for address and for zip code and for place you can add country and similar if you want it and copy it for the phone and then I want to create one field for created at so we know when the order was created created at equals models dot date time field auto now add is true so it's automatically filled in when you create a new order paid amount just so we know how much the the customer paid models dot decimal field max digits can be set to eight and decimal places to two and then I want the list of vendors who are in on this order since we can have more than one vendor vendors equals models dot many to many field pass in the vendor model and the related name is orders so it's very simple to get all orders for a specific vendor and I want to change the default ordering so I need to add a class meta ordering equals create a list minus created at so the newest orders is always on the top of the list minus just means descending order then I want to create a string representation of this so def str self return self dot first name so we just have something instead of the object name and I also need one model for keeping track of all the items in an order so class order item I think this is a good name models dot model here we need a reference to the order we're going to use we're going to use the foreign key order equals models dot foreign key order related name is items so we can get all the items for an order on delete equals models dot cascade so when we delete an order we also delete all of the items and then I can copy this 
because I need a reference to the product as well. To pass in the product model there. And we need one more for the vendor so we know who this item, this specific item belongs to. Vendor, pass, oops, sorry, their vendor. And then I want one boolean field so we can know if this item has been paid to the vendor. So vendor paid equals models.boolean field. Default can be set oops, to false. And the price, you can just copy this decimal field from up here, paste it. And quantity equals models.integral field. Default equals one. And I can copy this string representation and just replace self.first name with self.id. Great. So now it's time to update the database. Make migrations script and then migrate. Everything is okay. So we created a new model order and the order item model. Perfect. So I think I now can set this to done. And then it's a big step because next it's time to make it possible to check out. The first thing we're going to do then is to create a utilities file we're going to use to create the orders. So in the order app we create a new file utilities.py. This is just so we can separate a little bit of the code from the views because we don't want to have too much code inside the views. And then first we need to import the cart object from apps dot cart dot cart import cart and then we need to import the two models we just created from dot models import order and order item and then we can create a checkout function def checkout here we want to pass in the request oops the first name the last name the email the address the zip code, the place, the phone, and the amount that is going to be paid. And then we create a new instance of the order. So order equals order dot objects dot create first name equals first name, last name equals last name, email equals email, address equals address zip code equals zip code place equals place phone equals phone and paid amount equals amount and then for every item we have in the cart we need to create an order item to do that we say for item in cart request so we just create an instance like this order item dot object dot create order equals order we just want to create that here the product we're going to use is item which is a list product and the vendor equals item product dot vendor the price equals item product dot price and quantity is stored in the item quantity like that and then we need to return this and it's important that this on the same uh, indentation as the for loop and not inside here so here we say return order like that but I forgot to add one line here because here we need to say order dot vendors dot add item product dot vendor so this needs to be appended to the to the many to many field here so you know that every vendor is belonging to this order so then i can save that function and i can run the server just to check that everything is okay okay and then the next step is to get the uh, the api keys from stripe to do that you need an account we need to go to, to the dashboard on Stripe. 
I already have an account, but you need to create one in order to continue. And in here, you have something called Get Your Test API Keys. If I click it, I get the publishable key. And I can go into settings.py and edit here. So here, just stripe pub key equals and paste the one I just copied. And we also need a stripe secret key equals. And to get it, I need to click here and copy and paste. So this will be used in JavaScript and this is for the Django backend. So then I can save this. And then I want to create a form we can use to submit the checkout. So inside the cart app, I create a new file, forms.py. And then I import Django, no forms from Django, from Django import forms. And then I create the checkout form as in class, checkout form, forms.form. I need a field for the first name equals forms.char field max length 255. I can copy this, place with last name and email. But this can be an email field. And I need a place for phone, the address, the zip code. And the place and I also want one for the stripe token stripe token this is going to be a hidden field we are going to get from stripe like that so then I can save this and copy this name and go to views.py we are going to implement it into the cart detail view so first we can import stripe import stripe if i save now probably get an error because we haven't installed stripe yet to do that we just pip install stripe this will also install a few dependencies then we can run the server again and now this should be okay then i need to import a few more things from django i need access to the settings and also the messages so we can show a confirmation when the payment is okay or if there is an error so from django.conf import settings and from import messages and i need to import the form we just created from dot form import checkout form and I need to import the utility function we created in the order app. So from apps.order.utilities, import checkout. And now we have this object here we are going to need. And above these two, we can check that if the form has been submitted. So we just say if request.method equals post, then we know that the form has been submitted. And we can create an instance of it. So form equals checkout form and pass in the request.post. Then we can check if it is valid, if form dot is valid. So it will check that all of these fields are filled out by the user. So if I now just go back to views.py, if it is valid, I want to initialize stripe by saying stripe.api key equals settings dot stripe secret key and then we need to get the stripe token from the form stripe token equals form dot cleaned data stripe token and then we need to add a charge function charge equals stripe dot charge dot create and we need to pass in the amount, amount equals int, so we need to convert this to integer 
cart.getTotalCost multiplied with 100 because Stripe expects this price to come in cents and not the dollars. And the currency I want to use is USD for US dollars. And description equals charge from interior shop. And source is Stripe token. And if everything there is okay, then I can copy this, replace with first name so we get it from the form. Copy, place, last name, last name, email, email, phone, phone. Then the address, zip code, and the place. So now we have all the information from the form. And then we can create a new order by saying order equals checkout, request, as in the first name, the last name, the email, the address the zip code, the place, the phone, and cart.getTotalCost. And this function returns the ID of the, of the order. Then we can just say cart.clear and return redirect success. This page we will create soon. And if it's not a post request, a message else, form equals checkout form, and set it to empty. Then we need to make sure that we can use this in the front end. Form, form, and we also need access to the Stripe pub key. Settings.stripe pub key. So we need to do a few more things before we can test this. So if I go into the base.html file, I need to add a new block at the bottom because we're going to inject some JavaScript here. Block scripts and block save. So this can be used on the cart page as well. So then I can go back to cart.html and at the top here, I want to show errors if there are any. Sorry, not there. And then here, if there are any errors, I want to show them. If form.non field errors, so if there's anything wrong with the form that's not connected to the fields, div class notification is danger. And here I just say form dot non field errors. So I print them like that. And if. And I also want to loop through other errors as well. If form dot errors. Oops. Then in here as I did class notification is danger. And I create a UL list. And I can loop through all of the fields for field in form. And I show one error per field if there are any. For error in field.errors. Ally strong field.label. So we know which field the problem is. Error like that. This will show the message itself. Then I can close the end for loop. And end for. And then I need to do some changes for the stripe. So here below the title, I said div id card cart element. Just add a comment here. A stripe element will be inserted here. Like that. And then below here I can check if there are any messages from Stripe. So if messages, then we loop through them by saying for message 
in messages. Div class notification is danger message because the success message will show on a different page and for and and if and then it's time for the scripts so below this end block we create a new one block script so we can inject it to the base.html so I already created this so I don't sit here and do too many typos so first we include the JS from Stripe and then we create a new instance of Stripe and pass in the Stripe pub key which we pass in here, the Stripe pub key. And then we create something called elements which is something we get from Stripe and we create a new card and then we mount it that card element which is this we just created and then we loop through the form payment form this one which is this form up here id payment form because you need to stop the submission we add the event listener submit so we know if it's submitted and then we prevent the, the, the default action and then we use stripe to create a token based on the card and we get information back it either show errors or we call this stripe token handler and pass in the token we get from stripe and then we use the stripe token handler to get the form and the input field which we are going to create which we are called stripe token which refers to this field we are going to pass in to the to stripe later and then we just add the token id and append it to the form and then we submit it so now we can save this I will also add this to git if you just want to copy it so now we can create a very simple success page so below here we say def success pass in the request parameter return render we can copy this success.html save and then I can create a new template copy the top here success thanks for the order then we say end block and save it as success.html then we can just close it because we don't have to add anything more there yet but we need to import that page here so here's the path success views dot success name success and save so now we are ready to test the checkout okay local variable form reference before assignment okay so in views to pi maybe yes this was one too far indented like that and now refresh don't have anything there yet but if we click view add this to the cart then we can test the checkout first name stein as that code with stein gmail.com just type a random number address zip and place okay here is an error okay it can't find the cart element no because i did a typo um, here it was supposed to be card element of course so now we have this added here from stripe to test it you can use this code for the 242 and then you just need to add a date in the future cbc123 and then a zip code check out so now we can see what happens thanks for the order and it was also cleared up here so it seems that everything was working you can try to log in okay i haven't added the order here yet so if i just go back to the order and here from dot models import order and order item admin dot site dot register order admin 
dot site register order item save and refresh now we have it here order from Stein $1099 vendors call it Stein and if I go here to the order item it has one string returned non string of course sorry if I go back to models.py I need to change this to a string like this refresh and now we'll see the order is Stein the product the vendor is not paid and then the price and the quantity perfect so now the checkout is actually working so we can set this to done and we can set this to done before I continue I just want to say thanks to my patreons if you too want to support me you will find a link to my patreon in the description below next step now is to show the orders in the vendor area so the vendors can see there are no, no orders that belongs to them and the first thing I need to do is to make a little change to the order model so if I just find it here the change just to create a new custom function def get total price self return self dot price and multiply it with self dot quantity and save and then I need to go back to the to the vendor and get all of the orders there so inside the vendor app views.py to get the orders here I can go at the bottom no, sorry, vendor admin here. I say orders equals vendor.orders.all and I need to change them a little bit and add some amount and similar. So I need to loop through them and change it for order in orders order.vendor amount equals zero order.vendor paid amount is also zero order dot fully paid equals true now we're going to loop through and check if the if the vendor actually has been paid for this to do that we need to loop through all of the items in this order for item in order dot items dot all if item dot vendor equals request dot user dot vendor if not, we don't want to show this. We just want to say order dot vendor paid amount plus equals item dot get total price, which is the function we just created in the models.py file. And if the vendor item and the request isn't the same, we just say else order dot vendor amount plus equals item dot get total price order dot fully paid equals false and then we need to make this available in the front end as well okay this didn't make any sense because I did a little error we need to indent that a little bit and say if item dot vendor paid like that so we just want to loop through this if the item vendor is the same who is signed in and here we check if you are paid then we just add this to the paid amount and if not we append it to the vendor amount which you are owed and set fully paid to false because then we know that this isn't true so now we can save this and go back to the vendor admin vendor admin html file and then the, below this box for the products, I created a new box, which is the box for my orders. Here I check if I have any orders, and if I do, I loop through them one by one. I create a new div and check if the order has been fully paid, then I want the background color to be success light, which is light green. If not, it's info light, which is a blue light color. Add some margin bottom and some padding inside and then I create a new columns which is also multi-line so I can have more than one line of columns and then I give it a title which is the order ID and then the name 
and last name for the one who ordered. Below add all the information for the customer and then I have a little table with the products that you as the vendor has sold for this order. Then I loop through all of the items in this order and check if the item vendor is the same who is signed in. And if that I show the title, the price, quantity and if you are paid and then the total price. And then I just close the end for and the end if. So if I now save and just log out from the admin because this isn't a vendor user. Become vendor, login, code with Stein and then my password. Item is not defined. Okay, vendor views.py is an error. Item, sorry, little typo. I refresh now, you will see down here my orders. This is the name and the contact information and then the table with all of the products that are mine. This is paid no. So then everything here should be working. It's up to you as the owner of the page to set things as paid for the vendors and give him the money. But now at least I can go back here and set this to done. Next step now is to make it possible to edit a vendor because I want to make it possible to change the name of your own vendor. Sorry, before I set this to done, there's actually a little thing I want to do. If I go into the vendor model, I want to make it possible to get the total balance and the paid amount. So I need to create two more function here. Def get balance self items equals self dot items dot filter vendor paid equals false order vendors in equals self dot id so now i get all the items that belongs to this vendor return sum item dot product dot price multiplied with item dot quantity for item in items so here i just loop through all the items and then i multiply the price with the quantity and sum it and then i return it to the user and i want a similar function for the get paid amount here i want to set this to true like that besides that these are similar and then in the vendor admin at the top below the title here I create strong my balance close the strong and then there's a dollar sign vendor.get balance which is one of the functions we just created copy this my paid amount get paid amount and save so if I now refresh and go to the top you will see that my balance is $1,099, which the owner of this page owes me. Like that. Looks much better. And then I want to make it possible to add a button here so we can edit this name and also add an email address to the vendor. So if I now go back to views.py, this will require authentication. So we need to use the at login required decorator def edit vendor request parameter vendor equals request dot user dot vendor and then we can check if the form is submitted if request dot method equals post then we get the name from the form request dot post dot get whoops name defaulted to empty and the same for email. Then we check if name has been submitted because we need the name. And we can say vendor.createdby.email equals email. This is the user field email. Vendor.created, oops, created by.save vendor.name equals name and vendor.save. 
Then we can just return the user back to the vendor admin page. Return, redirect, vendor admin. And if not, so I don't have to say else, I can just say return render request, oops, typo, vendor edit vendor.html. And then we need to pass in this vendor to the front end and save. Then I can go in here, create a new template, save it as edit vendor.html. And I already created the code for this, but it's very simple with the edit vendor title and a simple form with the CSRF token. I have one field for the vendor name and I add vendor name here, so it's pre-filled. And this is not the same as the username. This is just the name that will be showing in the stores. And I have a field for email, which is also pre-filled if there are any. And a button for saving. So I can save this. And import this to the urls.py file. So here I say path edit vendor. Views dot edit vendor name edit vendor. And save. And inside the, the vendor admin, I can add this button. So a href URL edit vendor. Oops. Class button is info and is uppercase. Edit. Save. And if I now refresh, nothing happened. There is a typo in the urls.py file. Sorry, it should be in there. Now everything is okay. And I can refresh. If I click edit now, I can add an email code with stein at gmail.com. And I can also change this code with stein. So you can see the here the change has been made. Perfect. So I can set this to done and I can set this to done. The next step now is to notify the, the vendors after a sale. I'm going to use a send grid for this and already created the API key. You can use Gmail and similar as well. And if you have any other email providers, you can also use them. And to configure the SMTP servers, you need to go into settings.py and I paste in my own email things. So I just set the host to send grid, set the user and the password, the port, the TLS to true. And then I change this name to interior store. So that this is the default email address that I send from. And then I need to create two functions. I want one function for notifying the vendors and I want one helper function for notifying the customer. So I'm going to create a new utilities file. So inside the order and utilities, I can import a few things here from django.conf import settings. So we can get access to the settings we just added from django.core.mail import email multi alternatives. So we can send HTML emails and from django.template.loader import Oops, loader, import, render to string, because you need to just send a string as the email. So I already created the two functions, but I will go through them to show you what they're doing. So the first one is def notify vendor. We just pass in the order. I set the default email by using the one we just added in settings.py. And then I loop through all the vendor inside this vendor, no, this order. The two email is the one we added in the form we just created. And then the subject is new order and a very simple text content if you don't support HTML in the email client. The HTML content uses the render to string, which takes a template and just pass in, just like you render all of the other templates in this project. Then we create a new message and sending it. And the same goes with the notify customer. We just pass in order 
and add the same information as up here, but we send it to the order email and not the vendor. So I can save this. So now we have the functionality to send to the users. And then we need to create this function, no, this template email notify vendor. So inside here, the order, we create a new templates folder. And in there, new folder order. And in there, email notify vendor.html. I already created the HTML for this, but I will show you what I do. So first I add the doc type and the HTML and head. Then a simple meta tag, the title and some CSS just for resetting everything for the different email clients. And then inside the body, I create a new table, set the title to new order. And then add the details, which you also saw in the vendor admin place, which is just contact information for the user. And here I just loop through all the products that belongs to the vendor. I check here if the item vendor is the same as the vendor I pass in. So I will also add this template to Git if you just want to copy these and don't write all of this yourself. And I can close that. And then it's the email notify.html, which is the one for the customers. So I already created a code for this as well, but it's very similar to the other. You have the different title, but you have the same details. But here I show all the products because, yes, you're the one who ordered all of the products. So I can just save and close these two templates. And then the next step is to import these two functions into cart views.py. So we can call them when the order is finished. So here we can say from apps. No, sorry, I actually already imported this. So here I can just say note the notify customer and notify vendor. And if I just scroll down below here, where I know that everything is okay, we can say notify customer, pass in the order and notify vendor and pass in the order like that. Perfect. So I just want to see that this is correct till it is. Yes, we return the order and not just the ID. Perfect. So now the notifications should also be okay. But I want to do a little change here because I need to add a try catch here in case we get the problem with the charge. So here we need to say try and then we just mark all of this like that. So we need to just try if this is working. And if it's not, we get an accept exception. And here is the messages dot error request. There was something wrong with the payment. So then this will show in the form instead of going through with the payment. This should also be inside there like that. And we can save it. Then we can go back to the to-do list and set this task to done. And then it's time to show a list of vendors. So at the bottom of the website, here I want to, to be able to click vendors and then I want to see all the vendors that are represented on this website. So first I'm going to create a new view inside the vendor app. So inside the view.py. At the bottom, I can create a one and just call it def vendors. Pass in the request parameter. Then I can copy this vendors.html. And I need to get all of the vendors from the database. Vendors equals vendor.objects.all. You could add status as here in case you want to hide the vendor and similar, but I'm not going to show that now. Like that. So now the vendors is available in the front end. So I just want to copy a little bit of this, create a new file and save it as vendors.html. 
replace the title with vendors and then below the title I said div class columns is multi-line and I say for vendor in vendors so then I loop through all of the vendors we got from the back end div class column is three and div class box h2 class subtitle here I want to show the name of the vendor vendor name and then we close the end for loop like that and we can close the end block as well save and then I just want to go back to urls.py and at the bottom here as a path if it's empty, we use the views, oops, views dot vendors, name, vendors, save. Okay, here I see I got the end of file error. I need to go back here, add a parenthesis and save. And now there's no error anymore. And then I can go to base.html to add the link, a href url base.html like that vendors save refresh oops reverse base.html not found no this is not the url of course this is supposed to go to be vendors refresh now i can click vendors and there was a new mistake i did inside the vendors.html file yes there forget to add a curly bracket refresh and now I see code with Stein which is me and the only vendor on this page so this is the list of vendors if I go back here again now I can set this task is done and then I want to make it possible to see all of the products for a vendor and also then the details page of a vendor so if I now go back to views.py, I want to create a view for this. Def vendor request. From here I need to get the vendor ID so I know which vendor to show. Vendor equals get object or 404. Then I pass in the vendor model. PK, which is primary team, equals vendor ID. It import this function, which is a shortcut from Django. Because if this vendor doesn't exist, we can show a 404 page to the user. Then I can just copy this return statement, remove that s, remove that s, and remove that s. So now this is available in the front end. So now I can go to the, to the category page, product, template, category, because I can use this template. Then if I go back here, create a new file, vendor.html, because I want it in the same folder as all of the other vendor templates. Vendor.name, then I show this in the browser. And the same here, vendor.name. And as I say, for product in category.products.all, I say for product in vendor.products.all, and save. Then I need to import this to the URLs file. I can edit the bottom part. If there are an integer, then I can use this vendor ID, name, vendor, and save. Now this expects an integer. Sorry, I forgot to add the views.vendor. You can actually be a little bit tired here, sorry about that. And save. If I now go back to vendors.html, I can add a button below the title, hr, a href, url, vendor. And then I need to say pro vendor.id view, and I can close to this, close button is dark and is uppercase save 
refresh and now I have a simple view button there. If I click it, I see the name and then all of the products. Perfect. And that was it for this part. I hope it wasn't too confusing and that my explanation is okay. If you have any questions about something I did, please leave a comment below and I answer as soon as I can. I try to answer all of the comments I get and I really appreciate them. And if you want to help and support me, you need to click like if you liked the video and subscribe if you want more content like this. See you in the next video.